Hi guys and welcome back to another tutorial brought to you by Reillusion, hosted by iClone 3D. I'm Trista Ross and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at how we can actually get any motion to start from the root origin which will be the 000 on the world axis and why this is important is because a lot of the time when you do mocap motion or you use AI video to mocap you're going to find that the root motion starts in all different places and it will never start directly at 000 on the world axis in iClone. So it's very important in order to be able to blend motions later on, blend different motions in with your, you know, mocap data. It's very important to have the root origin start from 000. So I'm going to show you guys exactly how to do that today. Now, if we take this scene here in front of us, uh, we've got this character here and we're just going to go into our animation and we're just going to make sure that the auto motion alignment is set to no alignment. This is important because we're going to be manually aligning the root motion ourselves. Now, when we drag and drop some motion on, you'll see here, um, we've got this walking motion. This is some mocap data that we've created. The character walks and he goes up the stairs. Really nice piece of motion. It looks incredible. But what you're going to find here is um, when we turn on our world axis, and to do that, we're just going to go to the edit function and go to preference. And here we can actually turn on the world axis. You can also hit control A and that will bring that up for you. Now, when we have that up, you can see here, our motion doesn't actually start at the root. So this is going to obviously cause issues later on down the line. And you can see with a number of different mocap motions that we've got, none of them actually align with the root motion on the world axis. So what we're going to be doing today is looking at how to actually align the motion manually ourselves and get that to the root motion. Now, we're just going to turn on our motion direction control here. And you can see we've got this uh, line going down here, but you can see um, it's not actually a perfectly straight line yet. So we're just going to fix that and adjust that and get that to, you know, be a perfectly straight line. And we can manually do it ourselves by, you know, rotating the gizmos or we can actually just dial in the position we want it to end up in by using a little dial box down here. So we're just going to change that and uh, we'll dial that to zero. And that's going to give us a perfectly straight line. And now we know that our motion is traveling in a perfectly straight direction. So that's step one that we basically want to do. And we're just doing that just to make sure everything is perfectly aligned up. Now, at this point, you can see the characters still not aligned up to the root origin of the world axis. Um, you know, the characters a little to the left and uh, we're just going to get this perfectly positioned. Now to do this, very simple steps that we're going to follow. Uh, all we want to firstly do is we just want to actually sample the hip to the root. Um, and to do that, we're just going to basically right click on our motion down here and we can go up to the root motion and we can sample root to hip. And by doing this, you'll see that our gizmo is actually transformed back to the origin of the root motion set on this current character. And then we just want to click in our edit motion layer. And then all we're going to do is we're going to disable the IK effectors on both the legs so it doesn't affect any of the animation data. And then we're going to click on our hip and we're just going to align it manually to, you know, the root motion. But of course, we can't be 100% accurate. So we can use the drop down menu here and we can just set these keys to a value of zero and then that will align it perfectly. And now that means that we've got our motion perfectly aligned to the root and that's on the world axis. And then we just right click and we're going to just sample the hip to the X, Y position. And this is just going to now sample our gizmo to follow the motion. So we can see our gizmo is now back in place. And when we go to the middle, we've got our character starting from the root of the motion. So very, very simple to do. And in this next part, if you see, we've got a blue mannequin and we've got our white mannequin. And I'll just show you the difference when you kind of sample to the X, Y versus sample into the hip and kind of how it affects the actual motion overall. So with our blue character, we're going to actually sample him to the X, Y position. And we're just going to then bring him into the root origin and get him positioned at the zero, zero, zero. And now when we go in... Uh, close here to the feet section, you're going to see what's actually going on and you'll see there's some predominant foot sliding and this is because we've sampled the character to the X, Y motion, which is basically sampling him to his root origin motion opposed to sampling to the hip motion where we'll then eliminate all that kind of foot sliding. So you can see the, you know, 
side-by-side -side comparison with the blue character's feet are sliding and the white characters aren't. Okay, and in this next clip, we can see we've got a character who runs and then he turns to the right. And what we're gonna be doing is we're just gonna turn on our motion direction and we can see that we've got a problem already with the kind of offset of this line and the kind of direction the motion's going in. What we wanna do is, of course, we wanna get the line kind of, you know, lined up in the correct places just so we've got better control over it. And what we can do is we can come to the point just before he turns and we can break the motion clip at this point. And that's then gonna create our line here, as you can see. So now we've got our first directional line and then we've got our second directional line when the character turns. Now, of course, we can see the offset isn't correct and we just wanna get that position by changing in the Z axis here and uh, we can see it doesn't kind of line up with our root motion. So what we're going to do is we're just going to change the Z axis to zero and that's going to then position that in the correct way as you can see here and we can then play that back and we can see our character runs down the path and then runs to an angle. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to flatten all of that motion, make that one baked clip and then we can kind of play around with that as one clip and uh, we're gonna just do the root motion here. So we'll sample the root to the hip. And we're just gonna get that aligned properly to the origin here at the zero, zero axis. And once you've got that and you're happy with that, we can then change that back to the sample X, Y. And now we can play that back and we'll see our character is perfectly aligned to the root motion. And, you know, it just looks really, really good. If we play it from above, you can see what's going on there. And in this next clip, I'm just going to duplicate these two characters because we're going to look at how we can set the root motion for different axes, such as the X, Y, Z and the X, Y and the difference between them. So if we sample to the X, Y, Z axis, that's going to actually calculate for height adjustments as well. So, for example, if our character's walking up some stairs, um, we're going to adjust for the gizmo to actually follow the character up the stairs. We'll place a XY sample on this character here, just to show you guys the difference in real time. So as you can see, we've got our characters walking and you can see as our character here on the left is going up the stairs, the gizmo does calculate for the height and it follows the character up. If we click on our second character here, on the right, you can see the gizmo doesn't actually calculate for height, so it only follows the character to on a ground level. So this is the important of making sure you kind of use the right sample um, regarding the situation that you're in. If you've got a character going up the stairs, etc., you're gonna to wanna to sample to the X, Y, Z and, you know, do it accordingly. Now in this next scene, you can just see here, you know, the difference when, you know, we've kind of aligned him to the root motion and when we haven't. So if we drag and drop all of our mocap now, you can see characters perfectly aligned and set up at the root motion, zero, zero, zero. Again, really important for when you wanna blend motions together and you know blend different motion with mocap data, it's really important that you set the root motion for all of your kind of motions to start at the root origin. Really hope that helps and really hope to see you guys again soon for another tutorial.